Okay, so we are continuing with micro strip line and then after that we will see another popular printed lines with which is uh, CPW lines. So, with the micro strip line or CPW lines or any other type of uh, printed lines. So, the problem we face at millimeter wave frequencies is higher loss. So, already we have seen that dielectric loss, conductor loss both increases at millimeter wave frequencies and not only that we have one more problem due to surface wave. So, if the thickness of the given substrate is thicker compared to the wavelength, then the excitation of surface wave is more. So, as the frequency increases, then we should choose a th much thinner substrate to avoid the surface wave generation. So, uh, before going to other issues for micro strip line, those determines the high frequency limitations of uh, a micro strip line. So, let us discuss uh, what are the properties we will be uh, having for a micro strip line resonator. So, resonator we used in different applications. So, for example, by using resonator we can also design antennas. We know rectangular patch antenna, dipole antenna. So, all are examples of different type of resonators. So, in these antenna applications intentionally we want higher radiation loss, but the same resonator we can also use to design filters, typically band pass filter. In those applications, then we do not want any radiation. So, if there is any radiation that will be undesired, then how to keep radiation minimum from for this type of applications. Another important application is the tank circuit, which we use to determine the frequency of an oscillator. So, let us first uh, uh, see what are the uh, effects we will be facing at millimeter wave frequencies for a micro strip line resonator. So, we are going to consider one micro strip line of length lambda g by 2. So, let me draw the top view. So, it is showing a micro strip line, it is top view. So, I am just drawing the metallic strip part. when its length is lambda g by 2, it will resonate. Now, looking at the micro strip line, both ends are open circuited. So, we will be having high electric field at this plane and right hand side plane. So, from the fringing field, if the electric field and magnetic field, they are in same phase, there will be some radiation. And practically what we see, if we keep on increasing the width of this micro strip line resonator, then the part of magnetic field and electric field on these two planes, which is in air and in same phase increases. So, radiation will increase. So, what we see then, if I increase the width of this resonator W, then radiation from both of these ends will increase. So, if I want to design one antenna, we will choose a higher W, but if I want this resonator for filter applications, in that case the width should be small, but if it is too small, we face one more problem. What is that problem? So, in that case conductor loss will increase. So, in practice what we do for filter applications or for oscillator applications, we use a full wave simulator or electromagnetic solver and then tune the W for minimum loss and for minimum uh, radiation. So, this W value it is an optimum value uh, between the thinnest line and this thicker line. So, now let us see at millimeter wave frequencies, we have some other problems. What are those problems? So, we have mainly four reasons those determines the high frequency operation of a micro strip line. The first one is due to the threshold frequency of coupling to TM0 surface wave mode. Now, 
for a surface wave mode uh, transverse magnetic uh, excite mode excitation, what we have seen that let us say this is the micro strip line and the wave propagation direction in z direction, then for T m mode we have two different components of electric field. One component is in the direction of propagation, so E z component and another component is perpendicular to the ground plane, which is maximum on the ground plane. Now, if I look at the micro strip field lines, we also have this perpendicular field components. So, the surface wave T m 0 mode, it will be easily excited by micro strip line. Now, T m 0 mode, it does not have any cut off frequency. So, we cannot avoid this T m 0 mode excitation. The excitation of T m 0 mode, of course, it depends on substrate thickness. If the thickness increases, in that case, uh, we will be having more T m 0 mode excitation. So, we cannot avoid T m 0 mode excitation, but at least we can avoid uh, other higher order modes excitation like the first one is T m 1 mode, which has a cut off frequency. So, the first limitation it comes from the cut off frequency of T m 1 modes, which is given by this equation F t 1 approximately this is equal to c by twice pi d, where c this is the velocity of light in free space and d this is the thickness of the substrate and epsilon r this is the dielectric constant of the substrate. So, once we know the substrate parameter, so then we can calculate what would be f t 1 for that given substrate. Next one, this is due to the threshold frequency of coupling to T A T E 1 surface wave mode. So, now if I again go back to micro strip line field configuration, if you remember for T E mode, T E type surface wave mode, we have only one dominant electric field component which is parallel to the interface. So, if I look at the micro strip line field configuration, so electric field component of surface wave is parallel. So, that means it is perpendicular to the dominant dominant component of micro strip line. So, what we expect then almost no excitation of T e type surface wave mode from micro strip line, because these two field components are orthogonal to each other. And that is why usually for a straight micro strip line, there would not be any excitation of T e mode, but now consider bend. So, several times we will be using di uh, different type of junctions like T junctions, Y junctions, X junctions and micro strip line bends whenever we are going to design any components in printed lines. Now, this bend is associated with different type of field components. So, the orientation of this fringing fields it will change and they can easily excite T E modes. Now, again for T e 0 mode, we do not have any cut off frequency. So, we cannot avoid T e 0 mode excitation. So, only thing is that we can keep it minimum by choosing a thinner substrate. So, at least what we can do, we can avoid excitation of T e 1 mode. So, in this uh, equation F t 2, this it, it comes from the cut off frequency of T e 1 mode and which is given as F t 2 nearly equal to c by 4 d square root of epsilon r minus 1. So, for a given substrate, again we can calculate what is the F t 2 for a micro strip line we are expecting in that substrate. Next threshold frequency of transverse resonance. So, let me first explain what is transverse resonance then I will come to the threshold frequency. So, before micro strip line, uh, let us recall what is the field configuration for T e 1 0 mode inside a rectangular wave guide. So, if I draw the field strength, it varies sinusoidally and it is maximum on the central plane and then left and right hand side it decreases. So, this electric field components it becomes parallel to the 
side walls of a rectangular wave guide. So, obviously then electric field component will be 0 on the side walls and this length broadside length of the rectangular wave guide it should be at least lambda g by 2 otherwise it will not support this T e 1 0 mode excitation. Now, consider a micro strip line. So, micro strip line strip let us say it is too wide compared to the wavelength. How wide? Its length it is sorry its width is now given as approximately lambda g by 2. So, this is the strip it is sitting over a dielectric and this is the ground plane of the micro strip line. So, I am drawing the cross sectional view. Now, if I compare these two figures for rectangular wave guide, we have metallic side walls. So, that means we can we can model it by electric wall P E C and for micro strip line it looks like open circuit. So, we can model this two surface by P M C. So, in this case this micro strip line it can support transverse electromagnetic wave, but the field uh, configuration or the variation of electric field along x it will be different, because we have open circuit at two sides. So, how is the field configuration now? So, if I if I draw the field strength, so it will be maximum at the two side walls where we have P M C and it will be minimum on the central plane. So, this is called the transverse uh, electromagnetic resonance or simply we call it transverse resonance. So, for this then the condition is that the width of the strip of a micro strip line it should be at least lambda g by 2. So, it is highly possible when we are uh, dealing uh, with millimeter wave frequencies. Now, let us go back to slide. So, the threshold frequency of transverse resonance it is given by F T 3 it is approximately C by root epsilon r into twice w plus d, where w this is the width of the micro strip line. So, you see then it depends on the width of the micro strip line. We have a new parameter which was absent in F T 1 or F T 2. So, if I consider a 50 ohm line then we have to calculate what is the corresponding width in the given substrate and d is the thickness of the substrate. So, if I increase the thickness of the substrate obviously for 50 ohm line we have to increase w. If we choose lower epsilon r in that case also we have to increase w. So, that means even if I fix d for smaller epsilon r f t 3 will decrease and not only that in uh, when we will be designing millimeter wave components in that case we do not only deal with 50 ohm line sometimes we have to use a smaller impedance as small as let us say 35.35 ohm or when we are designing filter sometimes also we deal with much lower impedance let us say 20 ohm. So, now small impedance it is associated with large width. So, for a practical microwave circuit then what we do? We have to consider the widest section of the micro strip line and then calculate what is the corresponding F T 3. So, accordingly you have to choose the substrate for the given frequency of operation. And next the fourth one threshold frequency of parallel plate mode. So, do you remember that parallel plate excitation? So, if we have uh, metal on top and bottom of the substrate it can also support T E m wave propagation right it can also support T E and T m wave propagation. So, micro strip line 
it is being a strip parallel to ground plane, it can also support similar mode, but TEM mode it is already supporting. So, next then we have to consider the cutoff frequencies of TM mode and TE mode. So, we are not expecting that micro strip line will be supporting that parallel plate mode uh, excitation due to TE wave and TM waves. So, we have one more threshold frequency due to that which is given as F T 4 nearly equal to C by twice T square root of epsilon r, where D is the again thickness of the substrate. So, it depends mainly on the thickness of the substrate and the dielectric constant of the substrate. Now, for a given substrate, if we calculate all these four frequency components, in most of the cases, we will see F T 3 is minimum. So, the minimum among these four determines the maximum uh, operating frequency for that given substrate. Not only that, we consider some margin at least 10 to 20 percent. So, please uh, keep it in mind. So, next the variation of epsilon e and z for a given substrate, what we have seen from the electric field plot in this slide most of the electromagnetic wave it is confined inside the dielectric, but some of them is also in air. That is why we defined an effective epsilon and for uh, or e effective epsilon for this micro strip line and whose value is smaller than the epsilon r of the substrate and higher than air. Now, if the fringing field is less in air, in that case epsilon e will be more close to epsilon r value. right? So, if we have less fringing field, that time we can say epsilon e is very close to epsilon r. Now, for a given substrate, if I change the operating frequency, then the fringing field component it changes. If I increase frequency, then the thickness of the substrate with respect to lambda g, it is increasing then we will be having less fringing field in air with increasing frequency. So, what do we expect then? Epsilon e, it will be more close to epsilon r or in other words, epsilon e, it increases with frequency. So, we have a plot here, let us see. So, this is the calculated epsilon e from this closed form expression. So, look at the closed form expression. Epsilon e, it is a function of frequency and it is given by epsilon r minus this correction factor. Epsilon e 0, it, it, it means the effective epsilon at d c when frequency is tends to 0 and f by f 50, where f 50 is given here, f t 1 is the cutoff frequency defined as this first equation and w is the width of the strip here h is shown instead of d it represents the thickness of the substrate. Now, if we plot epsilon e it increases with frequency it is shown by this dashed line. We can correctly determine epsilon e by using any full wave simulator and we also plot it here that epsilon e by using Coulomb simulator. So, it almost follows this equation and we see what that it increases from d c to at 20 gigahertz uh, start uh, at 0 it is approximately 7.5 and it increases to almost 8.5 at 20 gigahertz. So, epsilon e it is a function of frequency and it increases with frequency the problem what we face characteristics impedance it almost remains constant, but the problem we face with beta, beta it becomes a function of frequency. If we do not consider the accurate value of epsilon e in that case whatever beta or lambda g we are calculating, so that will be with error. And whatever length we are considering, we have to correct it again 
noting down the actual or accurate values of epsilon e. Next see the variation of z naught. So, the z naught it is also a function of frequency, but uh, the variation of z naught uh, with frequency is not that significant like epsilon e. So, in most of the cases we will simply neglect the variation of z naught. Now, what are the sources of losses for micro strip line? Already we know the reasons. So, the first one is conductor loss and why? Because with increasing frequency skin depth decreases and the surface resistance will increase. So, conductor loss will increase and if we choose a thinner substrate what will happen to suppress the surface wave mode? Thinner substrate it is associated with higher electric field value. Why? Let us consider again one simple diagram. So, we have two scenario. In first case, this is substrate 1, we are considering again 50 ohm transmission line and in the second case for substrate 2, but we are considering a thinner substrate here, epsilon r for the first one and second one we are keeping it same. Now, if I send 1 watt of power through the micro strip line 1 and micro strip line 2 and in this case electromagnetic energy is mainly confined below the strip and here also same thing. Now, since the cross sectional area in the second case is much smaller, what we expect that displacement current or the electric field inside the dielectric it will be much higher compared to case 1. The induced current J s inside the conductor that will be also higher compared to case 1. So, in this case then loss will increase, conductor loss will increase. Not only that, since we are considering higher electric field inside the dielectric, in this case dielectric loss also will increase. So, in general the thumb rule is that if I use smaller cross sectional area, loss will increase. So, now let us go back to slide. So, for micro strip line alpha c it represents the attenuation constant uh, due to conductor loss. This is 8.686 multiplied by this quantity. So, it is a function of frequency. You see here we have two frequency dependent parameters, one f and another delta s, the skin depth. But skin depth it varies inversely with square root of frequency. So, as a result overall alpha c it increases with square root of f and not only that it is a function of characteristics impedance as well as it is a function of width of the micro strip line. As we expected that if we use thinner line we will be facing higher conductor loss. Now, remember this closed form expression is derived considering a smooth surface, but practically whatever surface we use that is not smooth, we always having some uh, rough surface. This is one example uh, of rolled copper. So, if you look at the surface, we cannot consider it as a smooth surface typically at millimeter wave frequencies, where skin depth is already very small. If you remember for copper at 100 gigahertz, the skin depth is just 0.21 micrometer. And for this rolled copper, typical surface roughness it varies between 0.3 to 0.4 micrometer. So, uh, the effect of the surface roughness is that increased alpha c. Let us consider one example. Here we are plotting alpha c in dB per millimeter versus frequency. We are considering the terahertz band just above 300 gigahertz. So, where the skin depth is much smaller compared to that this uh, surface roughness. 
So, let us say the surface roughness capital delta it is defined as 0 0.20 micrometer. Then if I consider smooth surface according to this formula, so then the raw loss is roughly 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 dB per millimeter over 300 to 400 gigahertz and it increases to 0 0.9 to 1.1 1 .1 dB per millimeter if I consider a surface roughness of 0 0.20 micrometer. And for this example, we are considering a BCB substrate and a 50 ohm micro strip line. The metal thickness is 3 micrometer and the dielectric thickness is 30 micrometer. So, what should be the optimal thickness of metal whenever we are designing any printed lines? We know the concept of skin depth. So, at 100 gigahertz for copper, we can say that surface wave, uh, the, that uh, that surface density of current it is already 1 by e times at 0.21 micrometer depth. Now, if I use let us say unnecessarily a thicker substrate, let us say a few hundred micrometer, we know that there would not be any current inside. So, in practice we use a thumb rule that the metal thickness should be at least 5 times of the skin depth 5 delta s. It is sufficient to design any printed lines. So, for this example you see we are considering 300 gigahertz to 400 gigahertz and we consider 3 micrometer thickness of strip and ground plane. So, that is more than enough for this frequency range. You can compare this value with rectangular waveguide alpha c it is also a function of frequency, but at cut off it is infinity, but how we define the operating band of a rectangular waveguide it is 1.25 times fc to 1.9 times of fc, where the loss alpha c it will be much less compared to micro strip line. How small? even 10 to 20 times smaller. So, that is why at sub millimeter wave frequencies or even at millimeter wave frequencies, we cannot use micro strip line for long distance communication. Then what we do? We use this printed lines like micro strip line or CPW line as interconnects for chip to chip connections or from one component to another component connection which we will be needing to design any millimeter wave circuits. So, let us take a short break then we will start again. Thank you.